Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to our uh, 10 a.m. online service as we open with our hymn of praise, uh, hymn number 400, uh, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. this morning we hope that you are um, prepared and ready to worship and give praise to God as we seek to give him all of the glory in our lives each and every day no matter where we are no matter what we're doing so I do want to lift up a couple of things I hope everyone downloads the bulletin this week for a list of our prayer requests and also to let you know what's going on in the life of our congregation we do want to let you know that this afternoon at 1.30, actually from 1.30 to 3 o'clock, we will be having drive-through communion. Um, we will be doing it on the side of the building facing the baseball park, and we want to encourage everyone to come, and we'll pray for you and offer you the communion elements. It'll be a time of worship and giving praise to God, and I hope everyone will come and be a part of that. 
Also, this afternoon at 4 o'clock uh, through Zoom, we will be having an administrative council meeting. So we want to invite everyone who is part of the administrative council to uh, come and take part in that. Also, the administrative council is an open meeting, so if there's anybody that would like to uh, hear or learn more about what's going on, just shoot me a message and I'll be happy to uh, let you to have the, the Zoom link. So we want to lift that up to you this morning. That's all of the prayer requests. That's all the news that I have. I do want to invite you, though, that part of our worship is giving. And so we want to invite you, as you're able, to give electronically through uh, the tab in, on our website. Or you can also give uh, by mail, P.O. Box 42, Farmington, Arkansas, 72730. We invite you to bow your heads. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time to be together, to worship you, and to give you praise, no matter where we are. Lord, we know that we are dispersed physically, but spiritually we are together through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you would move and touch our lives and our hearts, that you would help us to know compassion and love for one another and for our neighbor. And Lord, we give you the thanks and praise for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. He came to rise to show his power and mind. That's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down, worship this king. Cause he gave his everything. Cause he gave. his love he came to go prepare a place for us that's why we praise him that's why we sing and that's why we offer him our everything that's why we bow down worship this king because he gave Cause he gave his everything Cause he gave his everything This morning we enter into a time of worship Bringing our hurts and our struggles and our concerns to the foot of the cross This week has been a difficult one in the life of our country In the life of our world and related to the virus, a difficult one for our area in Northwest Arkansas. And so this morning you are invited and we wanna to join together in a time of prayer. I'll be praying for our prayer requests and then I'll also be offering a prayer for justice uh, that was put together by 24 seven prayer USA. So I invite you to bow your heads with me. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we lift our community to you. Lord, we know that there are those that are struggling with health issues, who've been in the hospital, and Lord, we pray for them. We pray for new life and the birth of 
children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren that are happening around us and in our community. Lord, we also pray that you would be with each and every person that's on our prayer list this morning, that you would grant them comfort, peace, that you would grant them healing, and that you would be with their families. And Lord, this morning we are also mindful of our country. We're mindful of our brokenness, Lord. And so, Lord, we just give that to you this morning. Heavenly Father, we know that our hearts are heavy. They're broken. Please give us eyes to see and ears to hear where your spirit is working. Help us to see every person the way that you see them. Break our hearts for what breaks yours, O oh Lord. Let us not merely say that we love each other. Give us strength to mourn with those who mourn, to weep with those who weep. Let your justice roll down like waters. Let your righteousness and love flow from us like rivers of living water. Purify our hearts, O Lord, and fill us with genuine hunger for justice, for mercy, for true peace. Heavenly Father, let justice and mercy start with me, start with you, start with us today. And Lord, we ask all of this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn is Be Thou My Vision, uh, hymn number 451. summertime and while this summer is probably not like any one that we've experienced in our lifetime there are certain things that we do there are certain routines that many of us have and I don't know about you but I know that one of the things that I often find myself doing is having a summer playlist or a song that I really am enjoying during the summertime now that song, those songs have changed over the years, and I know that many of us have different playlists. Some of us love the old classics, the, the Beach Boys. Some of us, I know in our congregation, love Jimmy Buffett. Some of us like to listen to worship songs like Hillsong or Bethel. 
But all of us have songs that we enjoy and that we listen to as we're driving from one place to another. With that in mind, I want to offer this summer a new kind of playlist. Actually, it's not a new playlist, it's an ancient playlist. The ancient playlist of the church, the ancient playlist of the Jewish faith, the Psalter, the Psalms. And so during this summer of Psalms, we want to discover and rediscover the book that inspired the prayers of God's people and the worship of God's people for thousands of years. The book of Psalms was composed over many centuries. The Psalms contain some of the earliest literature, the earliest uh, songs and, and uh, passages in the Old Testament, and some of the most new, the closest to uh, the ADs, the closest to the, the New Testament that we have. They were edited and composed together during the time of the Second Temple, and many of them are attributed to David. Either David wrote them or they, they reflect certain aspects of David's life. And it formed the way that the Jewish people at that time period learned to pray. They learned to, to worship together by singing the Psalms. And throughout history, God's people have had times of renewal and uh, renewed emphasis in prayer and worship as they, have, as they have studied and meditated on the Psalms, both in the Catholic tradition and in the Protestant tradition. Along with the book of Isaiah, the Psalms is probably the book of the Bible that Jesus quoted most, that he used most often. And, we th and when we think about Jesus praying, Jesus also would have used the Psalms daily as a way of praying to his Father. Contained within the 150 Psalms are statements of wisdom, thanksgiving, lament, calls for justice, and praise. They form a coherent theology of offering our lives in praise to God despite the times of lament despite the times of hardship, the times where it feels like all of the enemies are surrounding us, still we will give the Lord praise. Writer, former uh, professor of spiritual formation and social worker, Nathan Foster said this. He said, oh, it's all in there. Beauty, grit, guttural ache, anger, tears, hope, soaring praises, and proclamation of goodness and truth. And in the Psalter, we see ourselves and we find a voice. So for the next several weeks from June and into July, we're gonna be studying the Psalms. We're gonna be looking at specific Psalms and asking how can this inspire us today? How can this give us hope? And how can we offer our lives and grow deeper in our intimacy and our knowledge of God. And so this morning, we're going to begin at the beginning. That's a good place to start. We're going to look at Psalm number one. Psalm, re Psalm one reads this, or says this, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, are sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we ask that you would speak to us this morning that through these prayers, through these songs of worship, that you would touch us and that you would grow us and that we would experience a deeper intimacy with you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Now, I know that for many of us, not only is this a weird summer, but our schedules are different. Um, For many of us, summers are often a time of running around doing a hundred types of activities, uh, going on vacations. Uh, I know that there are many uh, many, uh, in our congregation who had cruises or other vacations uh, scheduled this summer that they're kind of disappointed they're not able to go on. But one of the other things that we traditionally do during the summer in our travels is that we see family. And so as I was thinking about this psalm this week, I was thinking about going and visiting my father-in-law who lives up near Calico Rock. He has a, a farm, and on this farm, it's, it's a small farm, there's not a, a ton of land, but there's some pastures, there's some places where he has animals, and so he has chickens and guineas and um, a big old dog that patrols the, the area named Walker, and he has cows that are in the pastures that are next to him. And there's even some family down the road that has and raises mules. And so there's mules and horses and all kinds of animals. And one of the other types of animals besides the the ones that I've mentioned are goats. Now goats are fun animals to look at. They're all over the place. They'll eat everything in sight. Um, they're, They're just kind of funny that way. And one of the things about goats and cows and sheep are that they're ruminants. And ruminants are, and I'm probably saying that wrong, so y'all will have to forgive me, but ruminants are a type of animal that chews constantly. Their stomachs, and they have, usually have more than one stomachs, don't work the same way that ours does. They have to, um, they lack the enzymes to digest their food the way that we do, and so they're constantly having to chew, regurgitate, chew again, regurgitate, and so on. It's kind of gross, but chewing is an important part of what ruminants do. And if you've ever looked at a cow or a goat or a sheep, they're constantly chewing something in their mouths. And in fact, you'd probably have to ask Ron Morrow if I'm right about this, but I've heard that somewhere that cows will chew their cud 30,000 times before, in a day before it's actually digested. So they're constantly chewing. Now what does that have to do with Psalm 1? Well, we're going to get there. But Psalm 1 is the first book of the Psalms. It's the first uh, song, the first prayer that was put in there. And it was put in there at the beginning for a reason. It's a short psalm, but it's full of wisdom. It kind of sets the stage for many of the psalms that are to follow. And in the psalm, there is a clear path, or actually two clear paths that are delineated. There is the path that leads to wickedness, and then there's the path that leads to godliness. And so in the first verse, we're told that blessed is the person who does not walk or follow the advice of the wicked, or stand in the path of sinner, that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. The significance here is, is that one action leads to a deeper, more full action. First, we're told that we're not supposed to walk or follow the ways of the wicked. Then it says they stand, or in a sense, identify with the ways of the wicked. And finally, they sit and become not only uh, participants, but even leaders in the mocking and scoffing. What the psalmist is suggesting, I believe, is that our behaviors, but not just our behaviors, but the people that we hang around with, is an indication of the path that we're going to tread. That if we're always hanging around those who mock and scoff at our faith, if we are always hanging around those that lead us in paths that don't lead to godliness, then we might be in trouble. Certainly, we're called to go out into our communities and share the good news. We're supposed to develop relationships with many different types of people around us. But we also need a community, a core group of people that can instruct us and help us in godliness. Because the company that we keep keep also often predicts our future. Proverbs 13.20 says this, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. 
eventually, whether we consciously understand it or not, who we associate it with will impact us, either positively or negatively. Now, in verse 3, or in verse 2, they talk, we talk about delighting in the law of the Lord. And this is a key part of this passage. It's, under, it's good for us to understand that when the psalmist is talking about the law, they're not just talking about a set of do's and don'ts. But when, when they talk about the Torah, the law, it's talking about instruction. It's talking about a way of life and a way of living that leads to blessedness, that leads to a deeper relationship and understanding of who, God's I, who God is. The message paraphrase, Eugene Peterson calls it God's word. And I think that that's a good way of describing it. We are to delight in God's word. And Psalm 1 encourages us not just to delight in God's word, but to actually meditate, to, uh, to focus our hearts and our minds on it, or as some translations describe it, to chew on it. So just like those ruminants, just like those sheep and those goats and those cows, we're called to, to chew and to, to ponder God's word. I love the way that the psalmist describes it in uh, Psalm 19, verses 7 through 10. They say that, the psalmist says this, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. When we're chewing on God's word, we're not chewing on uh, grass. We're not chewing on, uh, on the, the dried up pellets that we often feed our livestock, but we're chewing on something that brings life, that's sweet to the tongue, like the honeycomb, like the taste of honey on our lips. Now it's interesting, the cow and the goat and the sheep, if they were to stop chewing on their food, they would perish they would die. And so I think the psalmist is telling us that if we stop chewing on God's word, if we stop meditating and ruminating on God's word, then we are in danger of spiritually perishing. In verse, th in verse three, it tells us the godly, the, those who choose the path of godliness are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield abundant fruit that does not end. And in all they do, they prosper. Now, if you were to go to Israel, especially in the time of Jesus and earlier, but even today, the, the land of Israel is arid. It, it's dry. There are a lot of places where there's not a lot of water. But there's also these streams and these rivers and these valleys that are verdant, that are full of life. And so many of the horticulturalists and gardeners in that time period, they would plant trees and other plants around the beds of the river. And so when you're traveling down these rivers, you see these large trees that are full of life and that bear fruit and that are green always, uh, no matter what time of the year it is. And so the psalmist is describing that. The psalmist is giving us a picture of what it means to delight and to meditate on God's word, that when we ground ourselves in God's word, when we seek to follow God, we'll have this deeper in his intimacy, but we'll also produce fruit. Not only will we produce fruit, but our roots will grow deep. Our roots will grow deep in the faith that God has given us. So that when the storms of life come, when the crisis come, like, some, like what we're dealing with today, we can be strong. We cannot tip over, but to endure and to hold on and use God's word as a guide for all that we do. In Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, it says this, and he's describing a similar picture. It says, but blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. 
they will be like a tree planted by the water that does not send out its root by the stream, or that does send its roots out by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes because its leaves are always green. Jeremiah goes on to say that the godly person has no worries and never fails to bear fruit. This is a beautiful image, both in Psalm 1 and Jeremiah, of what it means to be grounded in Christ, to be grounded in God's word, and to not be afraid when things are dry, to not be afraid or to fear when things are hard, but to continually go to the source of living water, which is our Lord. Now in verse 4, the ungodly, those who are choosing the path of wickedness, are described as chafe. Chafe is the part of the harvest that can't be used, that can't be harvested. It dries up and blows away. So it is with those who chase after and choose to ground their lives in other things besides God's word. And there are many things today that we can ground ourselves in, that we can say, this is what I'm going to go after, or no, or this is what I'm going to go after, whether it's power or money or security, any of these things that we can ground our lives in instead of the Lord. And so the key concept that's, that's, uh, that's talked about in verse 4 and then again in verse 5 and 6 is that blessedness, happiness, and righteousness are all associated with taking delight in God's word. And, and likewise, that to not do that leads to paths of destruction. And that we're called to meditate, to dwell in, to ruminate, to chew on God's word each and every day of our lives. The Psalms are among the most treasured parts of scripture. They bring comfort to those who are in need. They provide wisdom and encouragement to those who are confused or discouraged. The call to to meditate on and delight in God's word, however, is not just about the Psalms. Although I do want to challenge us and I do want to encourage us this summer to be in the Psalms. Uh, In our bulletin, and I've posted it other places, there is a reading plan. And you can either do it in 30 days or 60 days, but to read through all 150 Psalms. And I hope you'll do that. But I also think it's important for us to ground our lives in the whole body of Scripture. That just as human beings, we need a, uh, a plate that's colorful, we also need a diet of Scripture that's colorful too, and that includes many parts of Scripture. Ruminating animals and cows need a wide pasture. And we also need a wide berth of Scripture in order to fully understand the history of salvation and what God is doing through his son, Jesus Christ, and what he's doing today through the church, which he has called us to be a part of it. And so that's really my invitation this morning, to be in the Psalms, to be reading over them this summer, but also to be fully into God's word. There's many ways to study. There, is, there are book studies that you can buy and that you can follow the books of the, script, of the Bible. There are some really great uh, videos on YouTube that can help you to understand the, the overall message of different books. There's also just picking a passage and reading it several times over and asking, Lord, I know what the original context of this passage is, but how are you speaking to me in my life and in the life of my community today? God has provided us the gift of his word. God, through the Holy Spirit, has inspired the authors of Scripture to help us to understand the breadth and depth and the love of God and the history of salvation. I hope that we will remember that Scripture can comfort us when we are in need, and it can also uh, afflict us when we're too comfortable to help us to know what we should do and the way that we should live. And God has called us to delight and find happiness in instruction in his instruction and to meditate on it day and night i think that that's worth something to chew on let's bow our heads holy and gracious god 
Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to be together. Lord, help us to chew on your word. Help, on, help us to meditate on it day and night and help us to lead or to seek to, to be led by the paths of righteousness so that we might dwell in your house forever and ever. Amen. This afternoon for our drive through communion, and I invite you now to receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. Amen.